Hello and welcome to Make Thrift Buy. This is the series where you send in clothes or accessories that you found on the internet and then I try my best to recreate them. Today's suggestion comes from Jadine Evanstein and they want me to do a tutorial on how to make a beret. Now the item that Jadine was referring to is technically from the internet, but is also technically a photo of mine. This photo. I thrifted this beret a few months ago and I really love wearing it. So when Jadine Abenstein suggested that I make a tutorial, I was like, heck yeah, I definitely want to learn how to make these. But also, all these other people have suggested that I try and make berries too. Some suggested ones with antlers on them, but that's something that can definitely easily be added after we have the basic beret construction down. So let's get started. The three things that I needed to make a beret on top of my standard sewing supplies are one, some fold over elastic, two, some felt cloth fabric. I bought half a meter, that's just over half a yard and it was more than enough and three, pattern paper. I used butcher's paper to draw my pattern onto, but you can easily use old newspapers or proper pattern paper if you want. Any paper you can draw on works. Now, I wanted to make a beret that fit basically like this one does. So first, what I did was to measure how wide this beret is. And berets are made out of circle shapes, so this circle has a diameter of about 11 inches. Now, I actually wanted to make my new beret just slightly larger than this, so I decided that I'd go for a beret width of 11.5 inches. So my final final beret is going to be 11.5 inches in diameter. So now I'm going to draw a pattern for this using my butcher's paper to draw on. Now it's worth noting that I actually have a relatively small head. Like children's sized hats often fit me. So if you have a normal size or a slightly larger than average sized head, then you might want to make your desired berry width 12 or 13 or even 14 inches wide. Once you've got your outer circle pattern piece cut out, hold it up to your head just to see like if it looks about the right size. So we have our first measurement, which is the desired width of the beret, which is the diameter of the circle. I'm going to add half an inch to this for seam allowance. So that gave me a circle with a diameter of 12 inches. So I'm gonna need to draw a circle that has a diameter of 12 inches down onto my pattern paper. I actually happen to have an embroidery hoop that's exactly 12 inches in diameter so I just traced around that onto my pattern paper and you can't really see the pencil line there so I'm just gonna go over it again in pen and then I cut the circle out Next, I wanna cut this circle in half. So I folded it in half to give me a crease that's directly down the center and then I cut along this line this gave me two identical half circle pieces. Now, one of these half circles will become the main outer beret pattern piece, and one will become the inner piece. So I labeled one of these half circles as the main piece, and I set it aside for later. The next measurement I had to take was my head measurement. Now, I didn't want my beret to sit like all the way down here on my head. That would look weird. So I measured around this part of my head. So this is approximately where a headband or a flower crown, if you like, would sit if you wore it on your head. It's basically where you want the beret to sit and I got 21 inches for my measurement. Okay, so 21 inches is the circumference measurement, but I want the radius of this circle. To get the radius, I divided my circumference by 6.28. This is two times pi, if you wanna know why I've used 6.28. So this gave me three point, lots of numbers. I'm going to round this down to three and a quarter inches for simplicity. So three and a quarter inches is going to be the radius of my inner circle. So next, I'm gonna cut this smaller circle out from the second half circle. To do this, first, I folded the second half circle in half like this to show me where the midpoint of the half circle is. And I drew a small mark onto the crease like this. Then I got my tape measure and I measured out three and a quarter inches out from this mark at several different points all the way around in a half circle shape like this. And then I joined these points up into a half circle. And then I cut along this line to give me this. And this is now my finished second pattern piece. I labeled the pattern piece as inner and I also drew two lines onto it like this at the straight edges. These lines indicate where to place the pattern onto the fold of the fabric, which we're gonna be doing next. Okay, so now it's time to use these to cut out some fabric. So I grabbed my felt fabric and I folded it over so it's doubled over like this with the fold of the fabric here. I placed my main pattern piece on this with the straight edge matching up with the fabric's fold. And then I cut around this. And when I unfolded the fabric, I had a perfect circle. 12 inches in diameter. I repeated this for the inner pattern piece, lining up the straight edges with the fabric's fold, and I cut this out as well. 
unfolded, the inner piece looks like this. And I also saved that little circle that I cut out from the center because I'll be using that later on. Then I placed the inner piece on top of the main piece, right sides together if your fabric has a right side. And then I pinned the two pieces together around the edges and I sewed them together like this all the way around using a straight stitch and some matching thread. So that gave me this. Next, I trimmed away the seam allowance as close to the stitches as possible. I also added some small notches around the edge of the circle to make turning it out easier. And then I turned the beret the right way around, pushing out the edges with my fingers. It's a good idea here to try it on for size and to also use an iron to flatten it out as well. The next step is to add elastic around the inner circle of the beret. So I grabbed my fold over elastic and I used my head circumference measurement from before, which was 21 inches for me, to dictate how long I cut the elastic to. Now, instead of cutting the elastic to 21 inches, I'm going to subtract four inches and cut the elastic to 17 inches instead. This is because elastic stretches and I wanna use that stretchy property of the elastic to hold the beret onto my head. You don't want it to be too tight or too loose. It's a good idea to try your elastic on around your head to decide how tight you wanna make it and then cut it to that length. And now I'm going to apply it to the inside of the beret. Now, if you don't know how to use fold over elastic, I explained how to attach it to the edge of a fabric in my DIY bodysuit episode, which I'll link to below. I explained it in a lot better detail in that episode. Also, it's a lot easier to see how it's applied there because here in my very tutorial, the colors are a little bit too similar to see what's going on, but I'll do my best. Explaining it quickly, what I'm gonna do first is sew the elastic to the wrong side of the fabric, like this with a normal zigzag stitch. And then when I've done that, I'm gonna fold the elastic over on the elastic's crease, and then I'm gonna sew it on like this using a smaller zigzag stitch on the edge of the elastic. So to ensure that the elastic is applied evenly to the inside of the beret, I put four evenly spaced pins around the inner circle of the beret like this. I also put three evenly spaced pins on the elastic like this. So one pin at one quarter of the length, another at half the length, and one more at three quarters of the length of the elastic. The fourth pin on the beret will match up with the elastic ends once it's sewn into a circle. So when I sew the elastic on, I'll start by matching up one pin on the beret with the start of the elastic and then I'll stretch the elastic to the next pin stretching as I sew and so on. This will be a lot easier to see when I'm actually sewing it. So let's go over to my sewing machine. Now it was easier to sew this on if I removed this larger table part from my sewing machine and then I placed the beret and elastic under the sewing foot like this. And then as I mentioned before I stretched the elastic out so that the first pin on the elastic matched up with the next pin on the beret. And I kept the elastic stretched like this as I sewed it on. And I used a zigzag stitch. So this is a little bit tricky to do and requires some practice. So I recommend this project for people who are comfortable with using elastic in sewing projects. Anyway, this is me sewing the elastic on all the way around the inner circle of the beret. Every time I got to one set of pins, I would remove the pins and then stretch the elastic so the next set of pins matched up. And then as I mentioned before, once the elastic sewn on like this, I folded the elastic over and sewed it on again all the way around to give me that nice finished fold over elastic look. Now the final thing I wanted to do was add a bubble because what is a beret without a bubble? So remember that small circle from before that I saved? I grabbed that and I drew a rectangle onto it with chalk that was about one and a half by three and a half inches. I cut that rectangle out and lengthways I folded each edge to the center like this. Then I folded this whole thing in half lengthways like this and I sewed down this edge here. Once I'd sewn that edge, I folded it in half like this and then I sewed along these edges here. Then I turned this inside out so the seam is on the inside and now I've got a little bubble to sew onto the beret. I sewed it directly onto the center on the outside of the beret using a needle and thread. And I started and finished the hand sewing on the inside of the bubble so that the end knots of the thread wouldn't be on the inside of the beret. Also, while I was doing this, this happened. Look at that, I just snapped my needle in half with my bare hands. I am too powerful, what the heck? Okay, <laughs> anyway, I finished sewing the bubble on and now I'm done. So, how did I go? I also 
also made a second beret with some thrifted thick velvety fabric that I had on hand. I wasn't 100% sure what the fabric was. Maybe it was suede? Anyway, I used that and I embroidered a daisy to the front of it as well. So my final conclusion for this make thrift buy is... So berets are actually way quicker and easier to make than I even thought they would be. And once you've got the basic construction down, you can customize it by adding little things like embroidery. By the way, I showed you all how to do these daisies in one of my recent style pile episodes. Or you can add ribbons and bows. You can add pom-poms, little antlers if you like. Anything you can think of, really. Also, if you want to go next level and make a lined beret, I just did a search for tutorials and I saw that Made by Aya, who makes great videos, by the way, has a really good tutorial on how to make a beret that is both lined and reversible so I'll pop the link for that in the description box below. If you try this or any of my other tutorials out please tag it on social media with DIY Annika so that I can see them. Anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making this video possible. To become my supporter go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.